And three, two, one. Uh, welcome to the Learn to Code podcast. Today is going to be a very focused episode. I'm going to stop rambling about stuff. Uh, as you know, uh, I've been busy looking for a new job to sustain myself and my family. But enough of that. You can uh, scramble episodes past. Um, today, we are going to talk about how to actually learn software development. I know that the the name of the podcast is Learn to Code, and I choose that name at the time. It seems to be uh, very accurate, uh, but let's be honest: uh, learning to code um, is a very broad, a very broad um, sentence, so to speak. So um, it doesn't even uh, touch how deep can uh, coding and programming and software development. Uh, go at uh, you can go deep on this and that's what we are going to be talking about today so uh, I got recently rejected from a job uh, yesterday I was trying to get um, into a database administration uh, position and everything went well and good uh, I did actually pass several uh, tests uh, well, interviews mostly, and somebody else um, was as, uh, was asking me uh, by phone and by uh, an application called Zoom, um, basically voice chat. I got some interviews and uh, a technical interview, and I was um, uh, I was asked very general questions about databases, uh, way too general, may I say. One of them was, um, if a query runs slow, what do you do? How do you solve that? And that's, well, I do actually need more information uh, about that. So uh, I began uh, um, uh, analyzing the problem, uh, asking the questions myself. And well, I, I will need to do such and such. And I moved from there. But that's enough, I guess. So uh, I'm telling this story because it's actually relevant to my point here. So don't 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 hang up <laughs> the podcast yet. So uh, I managed to get to the last phase, I believe, of the selection process, and the last interview uh, was with the actual CTO of the company. Uh, the company was called Near Shore Technologies. I I I didn't hear about them uh, until recently for this job, obviously. So what I did was uh, basically uh, an interview with this guy, uh, with this person, and uh, um, we didn't talk much actually. He talked about himself, what he does, and uh, how he was uh, an actual founder member. And that's all pretty uh, pretty well and good, I guess. Um, I made a long introduction about myself, I believe. Uh, I tried to sell myself at the moment. Um, it gave me the impression that he didn't know who I was until I just called. Uh, so that didn't uh, click right to me. That was a, a red flag for myself. So I guess that the selection process is being done by some people on human resources. Then I get to have a phone call or a voice chat uh, with one of the uh, IT guys there in order to establish if uh, I am basically a, um, a, a natural developer or a database administrator in this case uh, or not. Basically, just to see if I am full of, sh uh, of bullshit, basically or not, and that was the technical interview. And after that, the CTO basically was telling me what they actually require for the for the position. So basically he was telling me, you know what, uh, you know how to talk in English very well, you know how to communicate very well, um, do you have experience with Amazon Web Services? Uh, and I say, well, uh, not in an actual job before, because here in Mexico, um, 
most clients or not, or every client I've been working on or in, in any other job, um, the final client, the one that pays me the money basically, uh, or pays the company the money, they don't trust cloud services. I, I, and I mean like at all. And I've been working on government, I, uh, um, I've been working for the government and for private uh, companies um, for around 11 years. Most of that time has been in government positions. And, and I can tell you, uh, politicians in Mexico don't really trust uh, cloud services. They would rather have to deal with security issues on premises services, on premises servers maybe, and um, uh, rather than have their data in somebody else's uh, server. So yeah, that's it. So uh, I got rejected by the CTO. Uh, no hard feelings actually. Um, and then I decided, you know what? Maybe I should uh, increase my umbrella of knowledge and actually learn Amazon Web Services. Uh, although um, in the past episode I just mentioned that uh, I, I not I wasn't willing to learn a technology for the field of basically, well, why should I learn something if I'm not going to use it? Or I suspect that I'm not going to actually use it anyway. And to um, after reading some, um, I did my research on Google, obviously, and I went to the Amazon Web Services website. Um, that's all well and good. So I was basically working on um, researching for three hours, maybe two hours and a half, and reading about um, Amazon Web Services. And they do have um, a very big umbrella of frameworks, services, cloud services, and they do have a lot of services. So uh, I decided, you know what? Maybe uh, Pluralsight has something about that. And my surprise, my happy surprise was that uh, they actually do. Let me show you something here. Um, let me see. So uh, as you may or may not know, I've been working on um, looking for a new job. And another position uh, is on Volkswagen in Puebla. Uh, oh. Hola. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was my wife. Anyway, um, I've been looking for a new position on Volkswagen in Puebla. And they actually interviewed me uh, too. And during the technical interview, the technical interview wasn't a voice chat call or a phone call. It was actually a, a person to person meeting. Basically, I meet with the uh, with the with the project leader and uh, uh, with a software developer, maybe. So they both uh, were interviewing me and asking me questions. Um, and actually, I met a very old friend from back from uh, from college. Uh, so <laughs> uh, then I say, well, it's a really a small world, actually. And he say the same thing. Uh, we we inter uh, interchange our phone numbers. We even um, uh, I even managed to ask him if he will help me to complete a quest uh, to play with a friend on Hearthstone. And let's be honest, not many of my friends um, do like Hearthstone. Uh, he does, um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, the thing is that during the interview, uh, they were asking me, uh, well, you completed the technical uh, ATSAM, basically. You created a RESTful API using Python. Uh, that was very successful. Uh, uh, I sent I send them... Uh, a YouTube video explaining the uh, how to use the code that I write, um, explaining myself, my thought process, and all. Uh, there we are. So that was very fun. And, um, that was very fun and entertaining. Uh, yeah, the truth is that uh, they began asking me if I got actual experience in Amazon Web Services, 
And that's when I knew that maybe Amazon Web Services is one of those technologies that I don't have to wait uh, until I got a job to actually begin learning. So I interviewed them and asked them, well, what are the technologies that you need the most uh, for this position that you're requiring me? So the leader of the project told me, well, we basically need you or need somebody uh, knowledgeable or willing to learn uh, Amazon Web Services, obviously, and the specific Lambda Amazon Web Services, Cognito, that's for authentication, I believe, and saving data on local devices, and the Amazon Web Service uh, Gateway API. So I was uh, looking on what you're looking at here is basically, uh, let me, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a list of Fluorescite courses. And I've been uh, working my way here. And there are a lot of courses regarding Amazon Web Services alone. Um, most of the time, I only find a single path for uh, every given technology I'm looking for. Um, in my case, uh, when, I, uh, when I'm looking for Amazon Web Services, for example, I find a lot of paths, not just courses, uh, but se uh, yet several paths. And as I mentioned before in previous episodes, um, paths in Pluralsight are basically collections of uh, courses. So here do we, uh, we have Amazon Web Services Networking. And if we click here, for example, we are going to see um, Amazon networking, cloud-based networking on Amazon Web Services is the most basic form. Uh, it's the process of connecting cloud-based resources in secure ways. La, 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 la. So here, we do have a collection of several courses regarding this topic. And there is a coming soon pr um, delivering content on Amazon Web Services with Amazon CloudFront. That's a coming soon uh, course. It's not done yet, but uh, well, there it is, I guess. And there are several courses just for Amazon Web Services Networking. Uh, let me see if I can uh, go back here. There we go. And I managed to look for those three technologies. And now I do have, um, uh, I do have a, a channel Basically, channels are, play, are, are pretty much uh, YouTube playlists where you can add courses into, um, into the channel um, or, or even complete paths themselves. And you add them to the channel, and I basically use that to select the courses or, or even entire paths to this channel, for example. And these are the courses that I'm going to be watching this week. I believe, uh, preparing myself to get into the position. So what courses are we talking about? For example, Amazon Web Services Developer, an introduction to Amazon Web Services Lambda. Uh, that's uh, one of the courses. Uh, the first one I'm going to be watching is going to be Amazon Web Services Developer, the big picture. Uh, big picture videos or courses, uh, may I say, on Pluralsight, um, are special courses that basically explain uh, what are um, what the technology is, what is used for, and basically the big picture of it. So, especially for somebody experiencing Java, for example, uh, the big picture be, uh, course may not be uh, helpful. Maybe you may like to skip that especially if you do have some experience with C style languages. Uh, yet for me on Amazon Web Services, um, uh, since that's pretty much uh, new to me, maybe we may say, um, I don't have actual experience on that. So maybe the big picture uh, course is going to actually help me. So I'm going to watch that first. Then I'm going to be moving on into the other ones, uh, the Lambda courses. I do have an introduction to Amazon Web Service the Lambda. And then there is another course called Amazon Web Service Developer Lambda Deep Dive. So basically, it's an, uh, uh, the first course is going to be an introduction. 
And the second course is going to be uh, a deep dive into the technology itself. Uh, for Amazon Web Services Cognito, I didn't find uh, a course dedicated to Cognito alone, yet I did find a chapter dedicated to it and some videos about it on some on a course called Securing Applications on Amazon Web Services. Um, basically, this course uh, will allow you to build authentication systems for authentication for your apps and basically allows you to authenticate with your own um, users and password system, or uh, you can actually leverage the, um, uh, the ability to log in into your system using somebody else's authentication system. For example, uh, uh, Amazon authentication user and password, and you can actually ask uh, for a Facebook login, Google login, um, uh, Twitter login, uh, so so you can actually log in users using uh, some other website or web servers application. So, and the last one is Amazon Web Service um, networking and the API gateway. So that's basically uh, I was basically just um, looking for um, the technologies that um, that the that the leader uh, asked me to actually get into. I got these courses, I don't know how much time in total are they. Uh, maybe I can do a sum later, who knows. I'm going to be uh, working on these courses uh, starting today. And then that uh, called my attention, they actually mentioned, uh, maybe I should uh, add this first. Uh, they actually mentioned that they do work um, using a Scrum, and they mentioned that they use uh, software for Scrum. They they are not just working as uh, the Scrum, the Agile development thing. Uh, I am more of I I had work as a regular uh, <laughs> as a regular worker for the Scrum. Um, framework and as a scrum master in the past uh, the truth is that I am more like a classical scrum uh, guy uh, scrum is quite old already I think let me see um, scrum manifesto there we go so this is this the one single document that I read and it's uh, been signed from it's not too old actually November 2017 so and these are the guys that uh, that actually uh, proposed the first uh, um, the the uh, the uh, Scrum guidelines, you know. So I had read this document and followed the. Oh, what what is it? Are you for real? Sí, bueno. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buen día. Sí, buen día. ¿Quién habla? Ah, ¿qué tal? Eh, estoy bien, ya me ya me han hablado para lo de la renovación, pero ya les comenté que no tengo el dinero ahora para hacer la renovación. Voy a volver a ahorrar y volver a contratar el mismo plan, pero cuando junte el dinero, pero no va a ser ahorita en un mes, pues, porque pues sí es bastante. ¿Sí? El día a día, sí, me han dicho. Este, pues, el detalle está en que, o sea, no voy a contratar el servicio, ni, yo creo que ni de aquí ni a tres meses, porque necesito juntar el dinero y sí, son como 10.700 pesos, son casi 11.000 pesos. Entonces, este, y pues ese es el plan que yo utilizo, pero... Este, o, o no sé, o sea, tengo que juntar el dinero, pero pues obviamente tengo que pagar otras cosas, ¿no? Entonces, este, pues más que nada es eso, ¿no? Eh, no, por el momento no, o sea, no, tengo otras prioridades, tengo que pagar renta, comida, etcétera, ¿no? Y servicios, pero este, ahorita todavía no, no tengo el dinero. Sí, sale. Bueno, que tenga un buen día. A ver... 
Okay, guys, I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, that was at and uh, asking for uh, more money. They were actually asking me if I had, um, how do you call it? Uh, my plan for my phone is going to end uh, in, in five days and I don't have a job yet, so I'm going to be, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be paying that anytime soon. So I'm going to be saving money uh, and maybe get my phone up um, in the future. Uh, but right now, I'm not going to be paying this. Uh, I'm going to be uh, basically uh, waiting for and uh, until I get a new job uh, because I'm doing interviews and all that. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, okay, so this is the the um, the original document for for the uh, Scrum. The, this is the Scrum guide. Um, I don't remember it to be so new. Actually, it says November two thousand seventeen. Uh, who knows? I don't. I. I don't. I, it doesn't matter. Well, this. I guess this is the. Um, well, I don't guess. This is the the original uh, manifesto, I believe. So basically, uh, this uh, this guys and many other guys uh, decided to come together <laughs> um, one day and basically say, you know what? Uh, the way that we are building software is uh, not really uh, fast enough, fast enough or efficient enough. Uh, let's set some guidelines for delivering software because this uh, one, two, or three year uh, development cycles are very long, and the clients re don't really like that. So uh, they decided to uh, implement changes into software and deliverables in a weekly basis. Um, that's uh, um, a rudimentary way to see it, but never mind that. Uh, the purpose of the Scrum guy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, however, I find out um, courses about the Scrum, and there is actually, um, I believe, there is a path for this. I don't remember. Um, there is an actual path for that. There we go. Uh, this is the uh, Scrum framework. Basically, it's a collection of courses regarding the Scrum. And I'm going to be working with this, I guess. Um, Scrum Master Fundamentals. They actually begin with the Scrum Master Fundamentals. That's weird. Okay. Uh, Product Owner Fundamentals. Okay. A Scrum Master Fundamentals. Becoming a great Scrum Master. Product Owner Fundamentals. A Scrum Master Fundamentals. Growing yourself and your team. Um, big Scrum. Okay, so basically, the Scrum framework is for the Scrum Master and the Scrum and and Product Owner. So, I was actually thinking more about. Um, uh, well, I'm going to at least watch um, the first course, the introduction, introducing Scrum, and maybe uh, look for because I I had been a Scrum Master before. So what I actually need is uh, how to be um, dedicated worker for for Scrum. Uh, they do have a name here. Let me see. I don't remember. <laughs> you actually refer to uh, the development team. Basically, they don't have a, a real num a, a real name anyway. Um, the development team consists of professionals who do the work of delivering and potentially releasable increment of dump product at the end of each sprint. A dump increment is re is required at the sprint review. Blah, 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 blah. So basically, the worker bees, uh, the working bees are here, uh, the development team. Uh, every single person on the development team don't have a name here for what I can see here. Uh, that's what I didn't remember. How do you refer to a single person inside a development team? But never mind that. Well, the thing is, I'm going to be uh, a student in Scrum first, maybe, because it's, it's really short. It's 47 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, streaming the entire process here today. Uh, I'm going to be dedicating uh, my my time today uh, to learn this, and I'm going to be uh, streaming the entire thing. So after you are listening to this podcast, you may be interested in following me on Twitter at Jorge Escobar and um, Jorge Escobar at Mitzer, where I am uh, streaming this. So thank you for following, I guess. Uh, 
What I want to talk about, I've been talking about uh, too many things, and I'm not focusing. I'm not focused today. <laughs> okay, so basically, what I'm going to do is um, get myself into the shoes of the development team because now I'm going to be following a scrum master and working to deliver to have deliverables for the uh, project. Um, uh, for the product owner and I need to actually produce I'm not going to be managing a team a development team yet since I do have experience um, as a scrum master uh, I do know in a broader sense what they want from me most of the time uh, the development team does have blockage um, uh, and I'm not going to be a stock there as soon as I get a blockage I'm going to look for help, and that's uh, the main issue I got with um, with past developer uh, teams. They tend to have a, a blockage for three to four hours a day on on one thing that somebody else knew how to solve. Uh, for example, how to connect to a database using such and such framework on such and such programming language. And the issue is that uh, the pride or the fear to be considered an ignorant on inside the development team by making too many questions and considering that everybody else is actually doing something too. Uh, so maybe the fear of uh, distracting a team member uh, to help you solve a problem, uh, maybe uh, look down upon, uh, frown upon maybe. Uh, so the truth is that if you don't talk, then you are going to be stuck with that issue two, maybe three, maybe four hours, maybe an entire day. And if the problem can be solved by just asking somebody that already have experience on that, um, maybe you can say a, an entire day of just looking through the internet, looking through a stack overflow. Um, and basically just move on with your life. Uh, you basically need to ask questions. I know that the uh, the fear of being the new guy is going to come to me. The fear of appearing to basically make too many questions may raise an eyebrow um, here and there. Uh, yet i rather have that than spend uh, my entire day looking for a solution for something small. So... That's basically it. especially because I'm going to be working with technologies that I don't um, have a, a domain. So I don't have uh, actual experience with that. I am about to learn this. So learning software development is not simple. Uh, learn, uh, code, um, many organizations like code or dot or uh, or RG, I believe. Uh, code.org um, they say that learning to code uh, is simple um, at, it, that's uh, well it's, it's hard true because learning to code may take you five minutes uh, the truth is that the product that you can create in five minutes of learning is not going to be something that you are going to be able to sell it's going to be something fun. It's going to be something that will teach you something at the beginning. Uh, but the truth is that nobody pays for Hello World. So that's, that's the actual uh, fat of life. Okay? Uh, so how do you solve this problem? Well, basically, you need to have a system of learning. You need to stop looking for tutorials in YouTube. You need to stop looking for um, a short answer to a big problem on a stack overflow. You need to stop copy and pasting code. And you need to stop uh, asking people for big questions for uh, with short answers. Uh, nobody is going to, if you approach somebody and you t and you ask him, okay, uh, how do you make uh, an MMORPG like World of Warcraft? Because I want to uh, code something like that um, get a lot of money for myself and the first thing that comes to mind is you are never going to be able to do that uh, by your own alone so it's not gonna happen those kind of software those games 
rely on a very wide array of technologies and infrastructure. And not only that, a lot of people is involved. Artists, if, let's say that you don't really, uh, you're not going to be an artist, you're not going to be a sound designer uh, or a sound engineer or anything like that. You just want to code something because you you say, well, in the end, it's, everything is just code, it's, go, it's just code running on a computer. Uh, well, and, uh, and all this consider, maybe that's true, uh, it is possible to, uh, to create World of Warcraft uh, using binary code, maybe? Uh, yes, it, it is possible. It's not going to be done in, in real life, in practical life. Because why? Because uh, we are humans, and no one is going to use <laughs> is going to use a, a, a hairpin to, to dig a tunnel uh, across an, uh, an entire continent. Nobody is going to do that. So what do we need to do? Get more people, uh, specialized people, and, and it's just not going to happen. So the idea of yourself learning to program something and be able to create a massive project is not really going to happen. You need to specialize. You need to become uh, a member um, of the development team. And basically, work from there. So basically, you just need to focus yourself, um, work as a member of a team. Well, anyway, today what, I, what I'm going to be doing to all day is going to be um, Learning, learning software development. How do you do that? Well, after uh, almost an hour of talking uh, of rambling, <laughs> 30, 31 minutes of rambling, finally we're going to get into uh, the title of the podcast. So uh, you need to have a system. It's not any different from a student in college, yet basically you don't have to um, be accountable to a teacher or to a co-student. You only need to be accountable to yourself. And it may seem uh, deceiving at first, but um, the most strict teacher I had in my life uh, has no com uh, doesn't compare to how tyrannic can I be with myself. I am a tyrant regarding learning. If I was going to be a teacher, uh, no one would actually like uh, or want to be in a classroom with me. Why? Because I had seen how myself, uh, how I demand uh, results to myself. I am a tyrant regarding uh, teaching. So, uh, could, uh, I don't know, uh, I've been teaching software development to other people, and I tend to be very uh, understanding and very flexible, and I'm very nice, and everybody loves to be with me. Um, I, go, I can go slow or fast. Uh, I can uh, um, accommodate to anybody. Uh, uh, they basically like to be around me when they are learning, not when we are building. <laughs> Uh, when they are learning, uh, I know that we are not building something for real, and uh, the learning experience is very fun anyway. Uh, yet, when I am learning for myself, I tend to be very, uh, pretty much a tyrant, and I demand results in certain uh, lapses of time. So, you are going to realize that when I begin studying this. Person. The first course I'm going to be watching is actually this, Introducing a Scrum. Because it's been a, like, a, I, I believe, one year since I've been inside a Scrum team. And it seems like um, uh, the position I want to occupy because I not even, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get hired. Uh, I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to start learning right away. And the plan is basically, well, you know what, since I have to, ex uh, to wait Anyway, maybe I should just get a hard start and not wait until I put my foot on the office uh, to get my head into this. So I do still have a, a native subscription to Prosite, and I'm going to be using that to my advantage, obviously. I'm going to be using this 
I'm going to be working on learning Scrum. That's going to be very fast because I do have some experience. Yet, I haven't seen any courses on Scrum here, I, I believe. I don't remember. So I am curious about what can they actually teach me because I always learn something new on Prototype. Uh, although I'm watching courses for things that I supposed to already know, for example, uh, modeling database, I always find myself learning something new and very useful. So that's why I'm actually watching this. I'm going to be uh, learning uh, the Introduction Scrum uh, course. Maybe I should begin uh, making reviews about these courses because uh, I do have mixed feelings about uh, specific courses, but I'm digressing. Well, the thing is, I'm going to be a student in this, and I'm going to show you how to actually learn software development, not just learning to code. Learning to code, uh, can anybody can do that. Anybody can do a hello world in HTML, JavaScript, even Java. Uh, five minutes, and you get the idea. The truth is that um, uh, software development programming is not simple. Um, YouTube and many YouTubers tend to actually tell you um, that learning to code is simple, it's not hard, it doesn't require anything like, a, uh, the truth is that it requires something that they don't mention, and that is self-discipline. And you are going to realize about that today. If you are watching me on my Mixer channel, for example, you are going to realize how much self-discipline do you actually need. So what is self-discipline? Basically, is the ability of a person to do what needs to be done even when you don't feel like it. That's basically it. So, and that's going to happen to me. So uh, I guess I should get going. Uh, learning uh, software development is not, is hard, yet it is simple. You just need to walk the, the walk and don't try to look for shortcuts. They don't really exist, they are just dead ends, short dead ends, and you may get stuck there, and then you need to get back and get back on track and you're just losing time. So, I'm going to be uh, uh, learning a scrum. Maybe I should uh, talk about some tips here. Uh, so the plan is this, basically. I'm going to be watching this course once, non-stop. After, that's what I call an exploration view. And I'm going to be watching this course once. I'm not stopping, I'm not taking notes, I'm not taking anything. Then, I get my notebook, my physical notebook, and uh, or some piece of paper, anything like that. Maybe some index cards for some, for some special cases. But in this case, since it's a course of 47 minutes, I don't think I'm going to be needing index cards. I'm going to be using a notebook and I'm going to watch the course again. I'm going to be watching it twice. And the second time I'm going to be watching this course, I'm going to be taking notes. In, and I'm going to be taking notes in a system called Cornell Notes. Uh, it's a very popular uh, note-taking style. Uh, I'm going to be explaining it uh, very briefly while I'm doing it. And after I get my, my Cornell notes, I'm going to end up with a series of questions uh, regarding uh, the system itself. The Cornell notes involves creating questions for yourself about the subject you're studying. So I'm going to be taking Cornell notes, and I go, after I take those notes, I'm going to be answering the questions, I'm going to be a stock again, and I'm going to be reviewing uh, specific videos uh, regarding those questions. So I'm going to be watching the, this course uh, twice, and I'm going to be re-watching specific videos uh, a third time. So that's basically my study technique. Uh, um, well, that's my, my plan. I'm going to be working on uh, on, a, um, on lapses of 25 minutes, focus work, 25 minutes. After those 25 minutes end, I'm going to be taking a break of five minutes, and I'm going to be uh, doing that uh, until I finish the job of learning and introducing Scrum. Uh, that technique of working 
uh, in a focused manner for 25 minutes and resting five minutes. That's a technique. <coughs> That's called the Pomodoro technique. It's a Japanese thing, I believe. So you basically work um, 25 minutes straight, focus on that, uh, no social media, no video games, no nothing. Then when the time gets, whatever you're doing, you stop it. Don't work over 25 minutes. If you are in a mid-sentence, you leave that mid-sentence just like that. You put your notebook down, you pause the video, uh, you stop whatever you're coding. Uh, even if, uh, if you believe that you can finish that line, don't do it. Just finish at 25 minutes and then you start a clock for five minutes. And you can uh, stand up, go for coffee, uh, take some water, play video games. Uh, you can even watch porn if you want. I don't care. You do something else and don't think about your work for five minutes. The second the clock ticks at the end of the five minutes, you get back to where you to whatever you were working on and repeat the cycle. That's the Pomodoro technique. Uh, here I'm not going to be watching porn, I'm going to be playing a uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, why? Because single player games are very abundant on uh, on the Nintendo Switch and most games of, of that, uh, like Legend of Zelda, uh, for example, uh, you can basically just pause the game at any point. Um, you don't have to do any missions that require a, a, a dedicated lap uh, time, for example. Um, and I even recommend you, if you're going to do that with a video game, don't do it with an online game. Why? Because you may think, you know what? Uh, maybe I can play a, a Hearthstone match that's around five minutes. Uh, those matches can uh, go way beyond five minutes fast. Uh, just choose a game or watch some YouTube videos, listen to a podcast, listen to some music for five minutes, do something else. Uh, that something else needs to end at five minutes. At the time of uh, when the clock takes five minutes, I can pause the game and just focus on my job again. That's the idea. Just get rid of the job for five minutes and then go back fresh. That's basically it. And you're going to realize soon enough that doing that actually tricks your brain into thinking that this actually rests and you can focus again for another 25 minutes. So that's basically it. Um, techniques designed to improve the, uh, your performance and keep you sane at the same time. So uh, <laughs> I guess uh, that's a really good thing to do, um, basically. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to be finishing this podcast soon, I believe. It's been well over 43 minutes hauling. Oh my God. This is going to be one of the longest episodes ever, I believe, for the podcast. And that's just for this little course of 47 minutes. I'm going to be uh, streaming the entire experience so you can follow along. Uh, when I'm working, I'm going to uh, put attention to the chat, answering short questions. Uh, yet my main focus is going to be to study and I'm going to be talking what I'm thinking while I am studying. That's going to be uh, what I'm going to be doing. Uh, why? Uh, because if I just think for myself, I'm going to be silent the entire time. It's not going to be entertaining for the people watching. And second, um, I can teach people how to actually think because thinking requires uh, teaching, actually. You need to learn how to think. And thinking is one of those things that you need to actually practice in order to get the hang of it and do it right. So I'm going to be doing a lot of... Uh, uh, thinking in uh, and talk about what I'm thinking at the moment. So that's basically what a podcast is anyway. So why not? Um, well, I guess uh, I've been well off 44 minutes already. Uh, I guess uh, that should be it for today for the podcast. I'm going to be posting this episode on YouTube. You can go to my new channel or uh, it's, it's called Jorge Escobar in YouTube. I, go, I do have a playlist for this podcast there. You can see the video version of this. You're not losing too much, I, uh, I believe, uh, watching the, uh, only, only listening. 
because uh, it's basically on a scripted podcasting and you can follow me on twitter at jorge escobar you can follow me on mixer at jorge escobar too uh, so basically i use my name uh for every single um social media out there because it makes it easier for me and for everybody else so yeah yeah why not so thank you for coming in and listening and i shall be talking to you later today uh, i'm going to be streaming as soon as i finish this podcast so if you want to follow me on mixer right now you can actually do it and i'm going to be there working the entire day learning a scrum and amazon web services later thank you for coming in and goodbye